What is up and welcome back and today we're going to be covering how to beat the help defense. Now there's a good question that Mr. Bird brought up. He commented on how you can beat the help defense and I really love to see that Mr. Bird always trying to improve his basketball game. So with that said let's dive right in. Now the first thing I do want to cover is that if you are going to beat the help defense one versus two you really have to have or it could even be the full court press, you really have to have IQ and awareness. Now IQ means that you're able to read the defense. You're able to figure out what the defense is trying to do, so then you can prepare for it. And awareness is going to be not being caught off guard. Now there could be a player that has high IQ, but if the defense is being really fast and just blitzing you, and you're not paying attention, you can get trapped and lose the ball. So it definitely is going to be having both IQ and awareness being ready. Now the next thing is going to be also your speed. If you are a faster player, most likely you can get past the defense a lot easier. You can be quick off your feet, right? They can trap you. Also, if you do have very good passing skill or dribbling skill, right? If you do excel in that area, the passing and the dribbling, then it's going to be a lot more easier for you. Now in this video, we are going to talk about all these four throughout the video. And you can see kind of where you lie, right? You can see where your strengths are or where your weakness is. You can try to figure out how you can beat the help defense. All right, so with that said, let's get into all the little details. Now right here, I do have a five on five scenario. To start off, I am going to take off a few players. We're going to go mainly with, to keep it simple, we're going to go one versus two. And this right here is going to help you out, kind of see what's going on, right? So lots of times when you're bringing the ball up, you are going to have a defender guarding you, matching you, right? That's pretty much the typical scenario. And from time to time, you're also going to have another defender kind of behind that first defender. Now this is where I see, for example, some younger players or maybe inexperienced fall trapped too because if you're bringing the ball up, this is what I want everybody to notice, right? This defender with this up front defender make a line. So you are going to have a line right here. And in fact, let me bring in one more defender so you can picture this in your mind. So you see this right here? You are going to have the ball dribbler bring the ball up. As you can tell, from this defender to this defender, there's an imaginary line. And from this defender to this defender, there's another imaginary line. So the goal of the ball dribbler is to get past these defenders, especially this first one. So if you are really fast and skillful, you can move real quick and split the defense through here, right? You can get away. The guy tries to block you off for this guy. Now you have more open players back here, your own teammates. Right? Or what a lot of players do is they go around. So there's an invisible line right here. If you can move this way, right? and go around this player, then that's another way to go about it, right? So that's what I want everybody to figure out and picture in your mind. When you're looking at the defense, look at it as an imaginary line. Now, let me get rid of this player right here. Going back. So if you are bringing the ball up and then you see a defender start to guard you somewhat close, you got to have that awareness that this back player is moving towards you. So if you can spot that with your awareness, you're paying attention and your IQ, you're going to know, okay, maybe they're planning to trap me. Two versus one. So you got to see where this defender is moving. If he's moving a little bit closer to the baseline then possibly you can split the D down the middle or just be smart about it and go around 
right? Go around. You see this defender moving down? That's giving you an indication that they're going to try to trap you, the help D's coming along. So go away from that defender. But like I said, make sure you're having that IQ and that awareness because this defender could be lining up with this player and you're just looking at this player, right? You're just looking at this player. You're not really even thinking about it. You're just focused on your dribbling. And if you go kind of quick without even thinking about this player, this player can slide down and now you're going to be stuck in the trap, right? Especially if they play pretty close. And then you don't have no teammates helping you out. They're all down here. Then you can fall into that trap. So you see, it really does come down to being able to read the defense, see what's going on. If you can see there's a help defender moving down, then you can start to have an idea what's going on. You see the help defender moving towards the upper portion, then you know you have a couple options. Move away, the easiest. If you're fast and you can drill real quick, you want to cut through here because it's more open down here on the open floor. But you have to consider your speed and how good you are dribbling. And right here it's going to be a lot more easier going this way. So there you have that option. Definitely think about it in that way. you got to get past those invisible lines. Now we're going to bring in more players. Let me bring in more players. Get that five on five scenario. And this is where it gets a lot more trickier. And I am going to say lots of times when you're out there playing ball nowadays, right? Especially once you get the M get the ball inbounds. You're right here. Bringing down the ball. What's the tendency of lots of players to do? Spread out in this type of formation. Steph Curry effect. Everybody wants to line up for the threes. You'll have the outside players line up around here. They want to get that ball. Shoot a three-pointer. You do have a center, a good center. You'll want to line up down here somewhere, right? In the key. And then you're going to have your other teammate maybe line up on the left side or the right side. That's what you usually see. Let's put them up here just for the sake of it. And I want you to start visualizing this that's going on. I want you to use your mind and start thinking how all this is going about. So if you see, if you are the ball handler, you are bringing up the ball. And let's back up this defender. He's not going to, most smart defenders are not going to cover you down here. Pressure you as much, unless they have the help D. We talked about the help D already when it's moving down. Because if he gets B, now it turns into a 5v4, right? Again, IQ. Let me click on this. Right, you get past him. He's the only guy down here. You get past him. Now what's going to happen is to turn into a 5v4. You're going to have big time advantage. So most of the time in a 5 on 5 scenario, you're not going to see the on-ball guy go all the way down here. He's mainly going to be kind of waiting for you up here. All right. So that right there is a very realistic situation. So what are you going to do? Again, IQ and awareness. If you are getting caught a lot by the help defender, most of the time it could be you're receiving the ball and then you're bringing it down in the wrong lane. Think of it this way. You got this upper lane, the left lane, you got the middle lane, then you got the right lane. So if you are receiving the ball and you're just bringing it up straight, you could be running into more defenders. Look at that. More defenders. So if you're going to make a move right here, with this defender on you. I click on the right guy, not right here. So you're gonna make a move on this guy. Look, you have all these players right here now. It's getting crowded. So that right there is going to cause you a little bit more work or more teamwork, right? 
So if you are bringing up the ball up, have that foresight, have that IQ, where you can see there's more space right here. So if you do bring it up along this area, look, then you have a lot more space to operate. It's going to be pretty much a one-on-one -on -one situation. And if you are a very good scorer, this is the ideal setup you want. One-on-one, -on -one, isolated, you can go to the right, you can go to the left. That center is way deep in here. You have your teammate fronting them in the front, right? So it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to drive through and look over here, everybody's spread out. So right there, you're setting yourself up for success because you're able to read what's going on on the floor. You're able to see what the defenders are giving you, how your teammates are set up. Now, I am going to switch the situation a little bit so you can start seeing how you can keep getting better with the help defense. For example, let's get that defender and put him in front. So now he's fronting your big man. He's right here. So if you do happen to drive, and if this guy is a real good defender, you're able to get past this guy. Look where you're going to have. That help defender closing in on you, then this guy behind you, or he might be right next to you on the side or this side, right? So if you're not comfortable shooting over a big man, then that right there can be an issue. If you're not comfortable getting the ball to your teammate, right, when he moves down, then that's going to be very difficult for you, right? He's right here. You can't shoot over him. You can't pass it. So know where your skill level is at, right? But it is going to take IQ again. So you're right here. So you know if you cross this guy up, if you're past him, right, you're going to have to shoot it from right here, find a spot, or find a spot right here where this guy is far away. He's not close enough to be able to block that shot, right? But if you are a very good passer or you can finish with the defender on you, right? Then you can go right here and that's not even going to bother you. You can pass the ball up or finish at the rim with the defender trailing you, right? This is going to be behind you as well. So you see right there, one small change can change the whole outcome of what's going on, right? So it is going to matter all those factors we talked about, IQ, awareness, your speed, how skillful you are for passing or finishing, dribbling, all that right there. So let me switch this up to give you more insight on how you can improve and I'm not going to deep into all this and I'm giving you a nice general idea we could definitely go more in depth with the full court press give you a short example so you can start visualizing how you can get past defenders in the back court now when you get to the front court you got to see how the defense is also setting up Right, we talked about how the defense can set up in the back court. Now, in the front court right here, we're playing already past the halfway mark. Look to see the cues, how the defense is setting up. For example, let me switch this up a little bit. So moving on, now right here I do have a different type of scheme. As you can tell, I did switch up the defense. This defender now is going to be in front of your teammate. Also, these defenders are a little bit more moved in before you had that defender more over here. Same thing with this guy. He was more over here in this corner. But as you can tell, now these defenders right here are moved in more inward towards you. So what does that mean? There's going to be less space right here in the interior. These are going to be called single spacing, single spacing between defenders and also, even this defender right here, he can play the passing lane. If you drive past this guy, right? Now it's going to be a lot harder to pass the ball through here because this guy is ready. He's playing the passing lane with his arms. He has his arms sticking out. So, 
This defensive team is actually doing a better job. They're locking up the defense a lot better, going to make it harder for you. And in situations like this where there's not that many openings, that's where a lot of players have a hard time because that help D is going to close in on you. You drive past this guy, look at that. He's real close to you, maybe a step or two. If he blitzes, it's going to be really fast. You go around this way, a step or two. Or even if you're going down the lane, right? Now you got that center ready for you. So you can tell that it is going to be a lot harder to get past this setup. It's a lot different. It looks similar to the previous one, but different because everybody is set up a little bit more better to counter you doing something. So what can you do? So an important factor in a setup like this is knowing how you can manipulate the defense. And there's mainly going to be two ways to go about it. One's going to be you learning how to relocate. And the second one is going to be having your teammates move. And that's where I see a lot of young players, again, inexperienced, they don't utilize these type of methods. For example, the easiest one, if you're right here and you're really trying to operate, have your teammate cut down through here. It's going to cost everybody to shift a little bit more over. And this defender is going to have to follow him, if not, you can have that pass over on top of him. The back door and it's the easy make right here. It doesn't follow your teammate. Easy make right there. So in this case, this defender has to move and follow you, right? Then everything's going to shift over. What's that going to do? It's going to cause you to have all this room right here. You see where you can operate, it turns again into a 1v1 type situation. And that right there is going to give you the biggest advantage in the world. Right there, look. Okay, so be aware of where your teammates are at. Right, that's going to help you a whole lot. Now let me bring it back. Let me bring the setup back over here. Going to give you another way you can do it with your teammates. Bring them back over here. Diego was ready to play defense on you, plus playing the passing lane. And sometimes it's not going to take your teammate to do the entire relocation, right? All he has to do is sort of move a little bit more. There's a lot of factors involved. You can have the time against you. He can move a little bit. Have this player be focused on him, right? That's the whole point of having a good offense. Have these players being occupied with your teammates. If they're, if they're having movement going, they're trying to fake that they're going to cut down through here. They're going to do a backdoor. This defender is going to be too busy. It's going to make it hard for them to focus on what you're doing. Same thing right here. These teammates are active. Then what's going to happen? He's going to give you a little bit more space, you see? doesn't have to go all the way through. Sometimes it's good, right? You can have your teammates just don't be shy about it. Hey, cross over to the other side. Once he crosses over, then you have all this to operate. Then you have this guy moving down and this guy sliding down, right, to close up this spot. Then that just causes a lot of chaos, right, because the defense has to change in the moment how they're going to play you, right, cause a lot of chaos. As you can see, there's a lot of movement I'm talking about already. Your mind is trying to process it. And that's what you want to do. You don't want the defense just sitting there being comfortable. Anything you can do to make them feel uneasy, make them feel that they have to guard you, have to guard your teammates, it is going to open up a lot of things. Okay, so as you can see, a little bit of movement, making this player slide down because he's worried, worried about the back door now again you can operate very nicely again right here with with that little movement so right there is going to be having your teammates move right a lot of movement or a little bit and you bring it back to give you more options the same type of setup and i'm giving you a lot of different options so now we reset these two players that were down here. They're back to their original. This player is guarding right here the help D. 
you drive through. He's also playing the back door. He has active hands for that pass. So it's making it very hard for you to have that option available also if he goes. So in situations like this, sometimes you're not going to be able to have this guy move. Why? Because he's a low IQ player. He's not skillful enough. Maybe he's just a catch and shoot guy, inexperienced young player. So you can't expect too much from him. In those situations, you're going to have a whole bunch of them where you're out there playing pickup ball 24 hours LA Fitness. You're going to run into a lot of players that can be like this player. Maybe you're out doing a scrim, trying to get onto a travel team. Or you have players who they're selfish. They just want to sit here and shoot the three-pointer. So you're not going to have this player move a whole lot, right? He's not too aware. In those situations, and I know there's a whole bunch of them, what can you do as an individual? Well, if you are trying to drive towards the right and you don't have the spacing for it, you're sliding more this way, then you have more room to operate. If you like to play on the right-hand side of your moves, you have better finishes on the right-hand side, you shifted that approach. You didn't start off your move from this area. In fact, you reposition to have a better advantage. If you do like going more left, right? What are you going to do? Maybe you can slide a little bit more over here on this side. You see? You're setting up your approach to make your move, your crossover, and cut this way. You're going to have a three. You get past that defender. You're a better finisher on this side, right? Same deal. So... There's different ways you can manipulate the defense. You can rely on your teammates to relocate. You tell them where you want them to go. Hey, slide more to the corner. Opens up more space right here. No, I need you more in the corner. When he's doing all that, he's giving you more space to operate. So you can see, you can rely on your teammates or you can create the spacing yourself, right? By relocating to what you're trying to do. You're trying to go right, trying to go left. It's all going to be how you position yourself. And what's that called? That's called IQ, reading the defense, seeing what the defense is giving you and being able to manipulate the defense and you move to what you want. Not having the defense have you do what they want. You're having the defense react to what you're doing. You see, right there is going to be a big time key. So that's going to be a wrap for this video. I really try to give a nice overview for everybody so you can have different options. And it is going to require you to have good IQ and awareness, be able to spot what the defense is trying to do. You do see that second help defender moving down towards you. Then you have an idea that maybe they're planning to blitz you. So be ready for those type of situations. And if you are playing up in the front court, and all of a sudden you see that the spacing is bad. It's very difficult to get past defenders. And that second defender is locking you up. You manipulate the pieces. That's what's going to give you the advantage and not to the defense. You move them around. Have your teammates move for you. You move yourself as well. It's going to give you better spacing. So you see there's a lot of things that you can do that can give you the advantage in a game. But it's going to require you to study the game and this right here is a nice tool but get out there and practice like i said it's going to take time a lot of different reps you recognizing what's going on and those situations can come about naturally in an actual game but also do it outside a game that matters if you have teammates run a one versus two right that's very good to practice so you can get past two defenders make it into a game even who can score more points up to five, up to seven. Full court, go back and forth until somebody scores seven points. Then that's going to be a nice workout because you're going to be rotating and you're going to be practicing. So as you can see, there's a lot of fun and creative ways to practice this. And not just that, also work on your speed and your skill. If you, for example, do suicides, work on your conditioning, you're not going to get tired and you're going to become faster. Once you're faster, it's going to be harder for the help defense to arrive because you're going to be able to split that defense or go around them when they're trying to trap you and also work on your dribbling skills right the more skilled you are you're going to be a lot more shiftier more elusive so that is going to make it harder for the defense 
So there you have it, a nice overview of how to beat the help defense. And that's going to do it for us for today. If you did get a lot out of this video, please sub and like. I am a smaller channel. Every little bit goes a long way. We'll be back next time with more. Until then, peace and much love.